Hi, I'm Daryl Urbanski, and welcome to the Best Business Podcast. My mission is to help create 200 new multimillionaire business owners. How? You'll do better when you know better. In my interviews, you'll hear from self-made millionaires, seven-figure business owners, authors, and world-class experts sharing how they did it so you can too without experiencing the same obstacles they did. When your life and your business grow as a result of what you're about to discover, please call me and tell me about it. The number to leave a voicemail is 1-888-844-GROW. That's 1-888-844-4769. Long-distance charges may apply. Dial now to call me, connect, share your personal story of how my interviews have helped, or share your current challenges and frustrations so I can connect you with an appropriate course, coach, or help you if you connect. Now, if you like this interview, please share it with a friend you think will benefit. They'll appreciate it, and I will as well. You can also connect with me on social media. Look for Daryl Urbanski, D-A-R-Y-L, Urban Ski, U-R-B-A-N-S-K-I, and add me so we can be friends. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy what I've prepared for you right here, right now. Right now, I'd like to share with you three things which I believe will help improve your life, save you money, plus make your business and income grow fast. The first is to call 1-888-844-4769 or 1-888-844-GROW. Introduce yourself and tell me how I can help or how far you've come from where you were when you started. Your story can inspire others plus motivate those who are in now or have come from a similar situation. Second is let me suggest the best of the best options available for your current business. I speak to a lot of people and I can connect you to the expert resource or tool which will get you the growth you want in your business now if you will just take a second to tell me about yourself. Visit bestbusinesscoach.ca forward slash help. I'll diagnose the exact thing you need to get you from where you are now to where you want to be in your life and business. Once again, just go to bestbusinesscoach.ca forward slash help. And with a couple clicks, you'll see what I'd suggest you do if you sat down in front of me and help me understand your current mental, physical, financial situation, plus the stage and status of your current business now. So once again, go to bestbusinesscoach.ca forward slash help, click on what best describes you and only get the best you deserve. Your time is important, so help me get you the right tool, introduction, strategy, tactic, or tidbit of information you need for better revenues and save your time by needing less effort. Work smarter, not harder. I'm suggesting you help me help you work on your business instead of in it. Third, check out morefreemoney.com to plug a money-sucking black hole and save your business from disaster before it's too late. See, most entrepreneurs don't give their credit card processing accounts a second thought, but that's a big mistake costing you thousands and even tens of thousands of dollars each year. Money you deserve because you're the one who's done all the hard work you do to make the sale. The merchant industry is so bloated with fees, shaving half a percent or even a full percent can be worth a fortune to your bottom line. All you're doing is keeping more of the money you're already making. The other risk is having the wrong merchant account puts your entire business at risk if and when you hit a sudden growth spurt. Your merchant can decide to keep the money for eight months plus and shut down your ability to charge credit cards or even switch to a different merchant. Don't wait until it's too late. It takes five minutes and it's 100% free to find out how much you can save and make sure the merchant you have right now is the right one for your type of business. Be strategic. Set yourself up for safe, long-term growth. Visit morefreemoney.com to see how much more money you could be keeping from sales you already make. Stop your merchant from stealing from you after you close a sale and collect payment. Visit morefreemoney.com now. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Daryl Urbanski, as always, and today we are fortunate enough to have Peter Sandin with us today. And I say that we're fortunate because he has two very important skill sets, which he's used to increase his clients' incomes exponentially, and I literally mean by hundreds of a percent. Um, He focuses on value propositions, which is clearly articulating what you have to offer to your ideal client, and conversion optimization, which is once you've got a captive audience, how do you convert those into leads and sales? So he was actually the secret man um, in one instance who was snuck in the back door of a major international agency 
agency and world player to get their cli- their clients' results for them. But of course, because of agreements signed and all that, that's about all we can say. Um, except if you check out his site, you'll see some of the results he can talk about listed there for you. So, um, Peter, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> How are you doing? How are things in Finland? <laughs> Great, thank you. Yeah, it's getting a bit late, but this is still normal working hours for me. Got it, got it, got it. Did you listen to that uh, song I, I sent to you? <laughs> the Money Python one? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, so, right, let's jump into it. So, uh, Peter, did I did I miss anything? Is there anything you'd like to add to that? Or kind of maybe, if not, if you think I articulated kind of your background and what you present or what you offer pretty well, Maybe could we talk a little bit about how did you even get into that? Um, Well, yeah, sure. Uh, A minor change to what you said is that uh, marketing strategy is a big part of what I do, although it actually ties in a lot into value proposition development and conversion optimization. It's really kind of the middle piece, but I think we'll get to that a bit later. Um, But yeah, how I got started, I, I really started as a copywriter. I didn't do it for a really long time, but that was really my first focus. But pretty soon after I, I, I had done that for a while, um, it was actually only some months when I started to think, okay, maybe I should go into conversion optimization. Like the copywriting part is a big, major part of conversion optimization, and that was going well. So maybe I could learn the other stuff as well that you need in conversion optimization. So I went into that. Uh, I found it really rewarding. It was super interesting. I did it for a long time. Um, But at some point, I realized that there was one thing that always, well, not always, but almost always made the biggest difference in the results. And it was how well, how clearly, and and how how strongly was the value proposition coming across. So basically, how good reasons were the businesses giving to people to do what they wanted those people to do. So if you give people very lousy reasons to do something, they won't do it. Right. If you, if even if you have great reasons, but you're not communicating them well, not believably, not clearly, not right. you just make some mistakes in that. Again, they won't do it. Right. And so that because, was the one thing that really like, always seemed to make the biggest difference. So that's that's really how I got into value propositions. And you're right. That is that is um, that is such a huge thing because exactly if it's it's like the business graveyard is littered with great products and services that no one in the world knew about. So I love how you talk about that because you're right. If people don't understand why it's a good deal or why it's important that they take action now or why this is an opportune moment or why this product is better than another one, then it, you know they can't make an informed decision and so you're right that's a huge huge thing and I want to just stop for a second just to focus on that because you mentioned copywriting and how it's usefulness and conversion optimization and a lot of people depending on where they are in their business they may or may not realize how critical copywriting is for them because exactly that's that's the medium that you use to communicate whether you're copywriting scripts for your sales reps or you're copywriting uh, some sort of like video sales letter or some sort of script for some sort of like any sort of presentations you're going to be doing, even if it's on stage or if it's your sales page for your website. But that copywriting, that's really kind of what it is all about, right? It's all about articulating the value that you have to offer. And exactly like you just said, the reasons why it's valuable, the reasons why it's a good deal and just doing it clearly and succinctly. Um, Do you remember whose quote it was that said, sorry, I would have written you a shorter message, but I didn't have the time. Uh, no, but I, I, that's one of my yeah. favorite quotes. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do remember Seth Godin, I, I believe it was Seth Godin, who said something very similar, that it, it's easy to write long posts. No, sorry, it wasn't Seth Godin. It was someone commenting on Seth Godin, that it's easy to write long posts. It takes a lot more effort to write as short and as, as straightforwardly as Seth Godin does. Right, right, right. Exactly. So... Yeah, that's awesome. So that's where you got started in copywriting, and then you feel, realized that the biggest gap where people weren't really articulating the benefit, or maybe even the business that wasn't positioned the way it should be, and then that kind of led you to what? You got out of copywriting, and then what was the next stage? Uh, well, the conversion optimization was, was pretty long, what I did, and, and copywriting was a big part of it. It's it's really like you can't talk about conversion optimization without knowing copywriting. Or, well, you can, and a lot of people do, but it seems a bit like we're we're looking just one one tiny part of this whole bigger thing. Like right. copywriting makes such a big difference, and it's like people often think of copywriting as just 
writing those 30-page direct mail letters. Right. And sure, that's copywriting, but even if you write a headline for your landing page, yep. that's copywriting. Yep. Or the emails, so it, like if you're trying to generate leads, yeah. you're just writing some emails to get people to reply back. Hey, if you're interested, reply back with a phone number or let us know and we'll give you a call. Like that's copywriting. Ex- yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's where I kind of headed from that. And, and it, I found it more interesting than just copywriting, just because it, it kind of fit my personality and how I wanted to work better, because I, I just didn't want to just write. I found it more rewarding to be involved in the bigger proje- process of just overall increasing the conversion rates. Mm, 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 mm. Got it. So what was the kind of, excuse me, what was the greatest challenge that you felt you faced in in, in your progression in your business and having gone from copywriting to really helping focus on conversion optimization across the whole spectrum as opposed to just doing this kind of copy job and that kind of copy job? Um, and what were, well, and how did you overcome that? Like what were some of the learning curves that you had to go through? Um, well, the biggest challenges really in my business have been in my head. Like these personal beliefs around uh, mm. success and, and money and all these different things. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. No, mainly, I think they come from like upbringing and the culture. And, and how I've gotten around them is, well, really my wife. She's brilliant at noticing people's <laughs> limiting beliefs and expectation and all that kind of trouble. Um, so it's like that, that's, that's really been the biggest challenge. Uh, as far as like the, the business side, it has actually transitioned quite smoothly, even though I've made some pretty clear transitions. I started out as a copywriter, then I went to conversion optimization. And even though they're very connected, they are seen as very, very different. You can easily hire an, uh, someone as a copywriter and someone else as a conversion rate optimization expert. Like it, it's not unheard of. People just don't see them as the same group. Right. And then I went from conversion optimization, which really isn't my focus anymore, into much more of the value proposition development and building marketing strategies around that. So it's like, even though I've made these bigger changes and I'm sure they've kind of slowed down what I've done, it, like that side has been kind of consistent and, and much more easy than actually the personal beliefs and such that I've been much less aware of. Right. No, I think I, I agree with you 180%. I mean, I, I didn't, I remember you just reminded me, I did an interview. I can't remember where I was, but I did an interview for a podcast and, um, where I was the guest and I was in Vegas and I remember that I got in a drive to this conference I was speaking at. I was speaking at South by Southwest and um, the cab driver on the way there on the drive to the, to the event, to the conference, he told me about like, I was like, so why'd you move to Vegas? He was like, well, I figured it was as good as a place as any to die. And I was like, Okay, and is the in the twenty minute conversation? I just felt really poorly. I just felt bad for the guy because his like his mentality was just so terrible. And I just, yeah, you know, he told me like like he just it just and I and I didn't say any of it, and it just was coming from him. And you could tell that it was exactly like you said. It was just this, you know. I have I have a, a mentor who say that his job as our, as a mentor is that our heads are full of BS under concrete with another layer of BS and more concrete and another layer of BS. And his yeah. goal is like help break up the concrete and shovel the BS out. And I agree with you 180% that the mental game, I mean, when I ran a martial arts school, I would see students, we would go to a tournament and I would see students lose the fight before the match even began. When we would go to yeah. a competition, the other guy would, and that's something that I, again, I, I trained at another school. When we would break in between like training rounds, we would like look each other in the eye, like with your training partner, and you would try to like mean mug each other and stare the other guy down. And it was to <laughs> one, and it was to one psychologically not flinch, but two, to have that psychological advantage because it's, it's a real thing. So yeah, sorry, I yeah. didn't mean, I didn't mean to steal your win, but I just, I, you, you're right. You're so right. So, um, yeah, it, it seems that's. Like I know this is hard to swallow for a lot of people, and I don't necessarily mean it quite literally, but what you believe and what you expect is most commonly what your reality will be. So what, wherever you are now is, is usually at least entirely up to what, what you've believed and what you've expected in the past. And where you're headed is is almost entirely up to what you believe and what you expect now. Because yep. what you believe and what you expect really drives your behavior. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's so huge. And again, uh, this was like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, I was speaking with a friend and he called me because he was frustrated and he related this story to me of, he remembered when he was first like just getting started in his career, he was staying with a, he was sleeping on his friend's couch. You know, he was down on his luck. His friend let him stay on his couch. And he's like every month, you know, he was always, he's like every month, I don't know why, but he was always like $50 shy on rent. You know, yep. even though he was only paying them 400 bucks, he was like, here's, I got 350. I have to owe you $50. And he'd get them, the, he'd get the $50, right? But it'd always be like late. And then now, fast forward like two, three years, he's very successful. It's a beautiful apartment. Uh, it's like, it's like on like the 60th floor. There's a lot more zeros attached to all of his expenses, but he's like, I'm still in the same damn situation. Yeah. Where he's like, he's just missing that little, right? But it's like, he can afford it. So it's exactly what you said, how your behavior, your mental, it's just so big. It's such a real part of it. So, so how did you overcome that? How did you, how do you deal with that? Um, well, big part of like getting over limiting beliefs is is first of all noticing them and that's the hard part for most people at least it was for me but like really noticing your limiting belief can be insanely difficult right. because you don't see it as a limiting belief right. you, don't you know see you it know. as this is just the reality yep. that's that's the problem in it that you you believe that it's reality <laughs> so it's not some it, you don't have a mental list of okay here's my limiting beliefs right. so the first step is to notice things to really 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 notice it right. um the next thing is to argue with it basically just make the belief seem completely ludicrous right just give all the reasons you can figure out of, of yep. how to get over it yep. And then come up with an alternative belief that will replace the old one. And, and just keep focusing on that. And just repeat the process until you've been, like, taken in the new one. Right. And I know this is, this is really like business advice, even though it makes a huge, huge deal in your business and huge difference in, in your business and life. But that's, that's really how I've learned to do it. And, and it seems to work fairly well, although I'm not the expert. <laughs> so... Yeah, no, 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 but it's fine. And it's, it's, I think there's a lot of value in what you just shared. And, and if, if, you know, and it's, I, I was speaking with someone yesterday and they do, they do consulting and she, you know, she was just asking for some help. She's in a bit of trouble. Um, she's fine. She's just going through something, but she was talking about a client she was working with and that she does two types of consulting. She does roadblock consulting and then she does business consulting. And she has a client that was convinced he had a business problem, but she was really determined that, no, no, we need to figure out what your roadblocks are because all the business advice in the world won't make a lick of a difference. If you're, if you're just going to self-sabotage, if you're just going to get in your own yep. way, if you're not going to implement. So it really is, it's, it's like the chicken before the egg, but they're, they're both hand in hand. Um, so no, this is really valuable content. So, um, yeah, what was one of the biggest limiting beliefs challenges that you had overcome? Um, there's too many to pick from. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think some of the like it, it's hard to even articulate them precisely anymore because I've <laughs> worked so hard to kind of <laughs> to change them, them and mold memory. them into new ones <laughs> yeah. that are empowering. But um, something about basically, like simply put, the idea was that if I'm really successful, uh, it will alienate me from some of the people I, I would want to be even closer to, just because they have beliefs about success. Mm. They have beliefs, negative beliefs about successful people. So if uh, my belief was that if I am successful, then they will believe those things about me, which will then push me away or push them away from them push right. me away from them right. uh, or vice versa so like i think that was one of the biggest ones and and something i had com like i had no idea until suddenly it seemed so obvious that it seemed silly that i hadn't realized it before mm. yeah no you're right and i think that that's true i i just looked up one of michelangelo's quotes because i love this this is one of my favorite of his and it's the greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it but that it is too low and we reach it and that speaks yeah, to yeah. exactly what you said, because you're, you're afraid, there's a fear of success. There's a yeah. fear of, oh my gosh, if I'm successful, like, there's a fear of the trapping of success, like, oh gosh, if I'm successful, that means I have to, I have to actually, like, do it. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> right? And, yeah well, I think, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm really bad at remembering whose quotes I'm, I'm qu or saying, but I think it might have been Henry Ford, uh, but I might be wrong. Anyway, someone said that, um, your goals should be so high 
that everyone around you thinks you're a bit insane. Yeah. And and that's that's really something I kind of live by. But I, I make sure that everyone around me thinks I'm a little insane. Yep. And that's pretty hard since the people I like to hang around have very <laughs> high goals. But anyway, it, it, the point isn't that I'm going to get there necessarily. Of course, I hope so. But the point is that I have a belief that I will get there. Right. So then I keep, I keep working towards it. Yep. And even if I reach a goal that seems big on like any objective standards, and even I can see that it's a big goal and, and a big achievement and big outcome and everything, it's not like the end. It's, it, when the goal is so high that it, it almost seems like it's unrealistic, just almost, then something that I, I find important in my life and something that, okay, I've actually struggled quite a bit with is that you should enjoy the ride, not the place where you're going. Right. So if, if you're not actually going to enjoy what you're doing now and you're only working for the outcome, then it, it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. Because yeah. when you get there, it's not going to be what you actually hoped for. Or even if it is, it's a passing moment. Then you come up with a new goal. And then the next 10 years when you work towards that are going to be just like so-so. Yeah. Then you get the passing moments of, of like joy or sense of achievement or whatever it is. Yeah. And then again, the same thing. So really, uh, I think that having goals that are almost impossibly high makes sense because I can... I'm just the kind of person who very easily gets attached to goals and, and loses the focus of what's actually here and now. What am I doing? Am I enjoying the ride? Am I enjoying the way there? Right. So having those very high goals kind of makes it, even I can see that they're ridiculously high and ridiculously big, so I have to kind of make sure that I'm going to enjoy the way there. Yeah, and there's it depends on the person, I think, as well, because... You yeah. know, you can set really big goals and then obviously never come even close to them. Um, there's that quote, you know, shoot for the moon, at least you land amongst the stars. But, you know, there's people that just set these crazy goals, goals and they don't take the action towards yeah. them. Yeah, so yeah. there is there is that delicate dance. And I don't know if you're better off on to, – to, I don't know which side you're better off to err on. It just depends on the personality because if you're the type of person yeah. that you get def deflated – when you don't achieve the goal, then maybe having this monstrous goal can really be crushing, right? So yeah. it's, it is a delicate balance, and that's, I think, where it just comes to knowing yourself. And Yeah. Um, I think one thing that's at least fairly universal is that instead of having goals like, I'm going to make this much money, or I'm going to uh, own a house this big, or I'm going to have something specific, rather have the goal of how you're going to feel when you're working towards that. Or when you're working towards something good. Yeah. Have a goal of the emotions and have a goal of the feelings you're going to have yep. while you're headed towards the goal of having those feelings and so on. So like really focusing on the way there, having right. that as the primary focus can right. help a lot. At least like even the super achievers, and, and I, I could kind of qualify for that, will most likely achieve more and have a lot more fun by doing that along the way well and you know what the reality is and this is coming from me after coming off of a year where in 12 months i've had 10 people pass away three or four i was very very close to um you, you just don't know and i mean there's no real rhyme or reason to it and so yeah. um, i'm reading this book it's a great book it's called how to get control of your time and your life and it was recommended to me by brian kurtz from boardroom reports um, a huge uh, direct response marketing company, a huge, huge, huge icon in the industry. And anyways, they just, it's one of their top four books, top four or five books that everyone should read. And I've been going through it and I love it because he talks about – almost like this, like talking about like your goals. And I, I don't want to sp spoil it for anyone. It's not, a, it's not a long read, but it's a great read. And it really does start to focus you in on because one of the last things it asks is like, all right, now take all these goals and which one of these would be important if you only had six months left to live to achieve them? And suddenly it's yep. – you know, and it's – because none of us know when we're going. And so it's just, you know, even if you're on your path to build the 50, the $100 million company, all that sort of stuff, you got to keep sight on what's really, really important that you can't take it all with you. I heard Denzel Washington uh, speak at UCI um, uh, for a graduation speech, and he gave this wonderful talk. Um, there's a video of it up on YouTube. If you just search Denzel Washington UCI, and in it he talks about he's been blessed to make hundreds of millions of dollars in his lifetime. But one thing that he's realized is you never see a U-Haul behind a hearse because you can't take it with you. 
And yep. so, it, again, like you said, it's about – it's just – yeah. So anyways, I think we're hitting on important parts because I think if you've got those things in line – because this, you know, to focus on business growth and the, like, there's no way to cheat the amount of energy it takes to get a rop- rocket ship to break through the Earth's atmosphere. If you want to put a man on the moon, it's going to take a certain amount of energy, and there's just no way to cheat that. And the same thing with your company. If there's a certain amount, like if you want to get your company from X to Y, you know, or A to Z, you there's it's going to take a certain amount of time and energy, and your life will become imbalanced in driving through that. And it's important that you at least take inventory of your life and, hey, am I happy doing what I'm doing? Is this what I really enjoy doing? It's how I enjoy spending my time. All those sorts of things because if you're, you know, Life is long, but life is also very short. And I think that this is, yeah, you have to have the right mindset because if you if you don't have the right mindset, you're 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 done before you even get started. And exactly like you're saying, if you're not enjoying the journey, you're not going to get there. And you're you know you're just not going to have the you're not going to have the ability to go the distance because um, it will it's always it's always going to take twice as long as you thought. It's going to be twice as expensive, and, you know. And then once you get there, you're you're always going to go what's next. Yeah. I don't think there's a roof. I don't think there's a, a, a summit to this mountain. I think, you know, I remember the first time I had six figures in my bank account. I mean, I, I remember I remember thinking before, you know, like I I remember once I've been thinking before. Sorry, I know it's your interview, but I just want to say this. I remember when the first time I had six figures in my bank account that I was like, you know, it was such a great feeling. But then, like, it wasn't like I wasn't like suddenly. I mean, I did relax a bit, but it was like the first. Yeah. I, I think I got a week. Maybe a month of like, like, you know, the whole like, like that everyone wants financial freedom, like just like, ah, like whatever, like I can just kick, like what I can do whatever I want. Cause I know before, right? Cause I was anyways, but it yeah. just, it just fades so fast and, and money comes and goes so easily. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Especially since like when it comes to money, it's rarely that you suddenly get from zero to a hundred thousand. It's likely that you had 95,000 the week before. Right. So having a few more thousand it's it's just a longer number but the difference is actually relatively small right. so like i'm surprised if it took you a month and happy for you if you, if you were able to celebrate <laughs> it for a whole month i think most people would be like oh well that was nice let's celebrate for 15 minutes yeah. <laughs> like it, it just like unless you get the money suddenly it, the change is actually very small so really like it should be these smaller goals all the way that that you kind of can celebrate and feel better and better about. Right. But really, I, I think it's it's about the way there, not not really the goals. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, it's, a, yeah, exactly. And, well, it's, I think it's about, I think it's kind of about both because that's, I want to say, because that's what you'd said before. It is about both. It's about the goal and, you know, wanting to have accomplished that. But it's also about the journey and making sure that you're in line with who you want to be like I have a mantra I've been saying ever since I lived in Japan that I'm living a long, happy, healthy, joyful, and wealthy life because those are my priorities. I want to live a long life. I want, I want to live to be 300, and I don't want to be like decrepit at like 280. I want to be like youthful and you know, full of vitality at like 280. Like I just want to drop like at 300, right? I don't want to like – so I want to live a long life. I want to live a happy life because I think those are the two most important, and I want to live long, happy, healthy, and then joy I think is different than happiness because it's about making other yeah. people happy. Long, happy, healthy, joyful, and then wealthy life. So, but yeah. All right. So let's talk about more a bit about you. So, um, I mean, this is great because we're really talking about if you know, even if you're getting started, if you're struggling, um, sorry, even if you're getting started, or if you're already in existing business and you're just struggling to break through the next level, you've got frustrations. We all have frustrations in our lives. I think this has been really good content for people just to help, like, snap you out of it. You know, like, you know, whatever you're going through, whatever your problem is. Everyone else is going through problems too, and so guess what's going to happen on the other side of this problem you're facing? There's going to be another one, right? It's going to yeah, be yeah. One. That's like if you ask anyone who's successful on on any any standard, how did you get there? They're most likely, if they're at all aware of what has happened, they're right. going to tell you that okay, it was a long series of problems, right. long series of failures, quote right. unquote. Right. So, like, no matter how hard it is now, it can lead to something better but it, it's it's in the mindset but i think what you were trying to lead us to is like more of the practical approach of what to actually do next not just how to think of what you're going to do next right 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 so um 
Yeah, so let's let's talk about um, let's talk about that then. What would you recommend to someone who's either starting out or who's struggling with getting to the next tier, based on how to either with their marketing strategy, their value proposition, how to how to you know everyone everyone wants more sales, right? Everyone wants more sales, yep. and more money. So what would you what would you recommend? Um, having worked with tons of clients, um, you know, there's always kind of the commonalities among people. What would you suggest? So yeah, um, it, I think it always boils down to focus um, in, in many different ways. Either it's focus of what you should do or whom you should serve or what tactics to use or what strategy you should have or what you should spend your time on or uh, what things you should, communi- you should communicate in your marketing or focus on whatever else. Um, there's kind of two categories though. There's the f- lack of focus which leads to trying too many things. Uh, trying to do social media and blogging and all the different kinds of advertising and email marketing and networking and speaking and videos and like everything that there is, which usually means that you just don't have a very specific marketing strategy. Because when you have a very specific marketing strategy, then you know what the pieces are, what are kind of the different puzzle pieces of your marketing strategy. So that's the one kind of lack of focus. And the other kind, which is it's kind of similar, but it's, it's still worth mentioning separately, is, is the lack of focus of what you're really trying to make people believe and understand and see about you. Mm. So basically, lack of understanding what your value proposition. What are the key ideas that are most likely to make people want to buy from you? Because that's really what marketing is supposed to do. It's supposed to make people buy from you. And people buy from you when they want to buy from you. So in its simplest form, marketing is supposed to make people want to buy from you. So you should give people reasons to want to buy from you. Mm-hmm. And if, if you're not really focused on or not really clear about what those things are, and there's really only you should focus on like three or four ideas. Mm-hmm. So if you if you don't have the focus on those, then your marketing easily gets kind of diluted. You're, you're not focusing on so, or you're, you're trying to get across so many ideas that it's really hard to believe any of them or even understand any of them. So those are, I, I think, the two key ways of, of looking at focus and how it makes such a big difference. Right, right, right. Yeah, and uh, another mentor of mine, he made a great acronym out of focus um, called, and he was follow one course until successful. And I love that. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, yeah. And I, I, I still struggle with it, but I, I love what you're saying because you're right. I mean, Bruce Lee said that I fear the man who's practiced one kick a thousand times more than the man who's practiced a thousand kicks once. And you'll find that in any market, there's always the 80, 20 of yeah. what people respond to. So you might have, like, I remember when I had a perfect example of this, when you're talking about different strategies, I set up a marketing campaign. It was a test. So I did this intentionally. But this was back when I had a martial arts school, and I had tested 11 different appeals. And so what that means is 11 different like hooks, 11 different reasons why someone might want to come and try out a class. And I had like get, uh, get in shape, lose weight, build, you know, in- improve your confidence, meet people, uh, you know, learn self-defense. I had all these things that I had tested, right? And the one that just dominated all the other ones was a free fighter fitness and skill assessment. And it was with males 18 to 24, and it outperformed everything else by like 1,100%. It was just like that was the 80-20. And, I, you know, and of course, there's tons. There's like there's kids programs, and there's a lot of money in kids programs. But just in the community that I was in was a university town, and it was just the males 18 to 24. Like that was it. And so exactly like you say, that focus, being able to – instead of trying to be all things to all people, you know, that's really when at least that business for me – took off when I decided to be about them and for them and focus on them. And we still got other people. I still got, you know, firefighters and police officers. And, you know, we had some old karate guys that, you know, they just came and wanted to get like, you know, beat up and just, you know, get a good sweat going and stuff like that. But it was by having a stake in the ground for who I was for and what I'd focused on, I really was able to become their champion. And, um, and, and exactly like you're saying. So I just want to support what you said. Yeah, that's that's basically what I focus on now, helping people figure out, first of all, who their target customers are, but, but also what are the key ideas that are most likely to make those people want to buy the products or services that they're selling. Mm, 
Got and that's, that's how, what value proposition means to me. It's a term that has many different definitions and they're mostly kind of vague. Uh, and the more specific ones are usually like at best something you could use as an internal tool in some like boardroom meeting. But like when it comes down to just what are the key ideas that are most likely to make your target customers want to buy your products or services, it's, it's a very practical thing. It's exactly what you're supposed to then say in your marketing. Right. And so do you have any tips for people? Like on like how how do they they're like how do I even do that? How do I get started? Um well yeah, there's basically three things you should look at and and I know this can get a little tricky especially since if you're not actually listing them out right now. So I'll I'll uh, just quickly give a URL. I have an exercise on it which is at petersandine.com slash value. It's it's just a quick exercise that kind of shows these these three things. Uh, that you should be focusing on and, and very aware of. So three things that affect how likely an idea is to make people want to buy from you. The first is how much do people actually want that thing that you're talking about? So if, if you were talking about getting healthy or losing weight or getting the evaluation, then clearly people wanted the evaluation a lot, not nearly as much as the other two. So that's that's the first thing. Like, how much do people actually want it? How how high is the desire for that thing? And it doesn't have to be like this very specific thing. It can be an outcome. It can be a a, a process, or it can be just a quality. So it can be like an e-commerce site might list that. Okay, we have a really big selection. So people people would want to buy from you, possibly because you have a really big selection. Right. So the second thing is is how unique it is. So if people can find the same thing from all your competitors, then it's not a reason to buy from you. Right. It might be a reason to buy overall that thing, mm. but it's not a reason to buy from you. Mm. So it's it's it has very limited value in marketing. Of course, you can sometimes, especially like there are exceptions of to every rule, and sometimes you can use effectively ideas that aren't unique to you but it's it's very risky and and rarely a good idea unless you're really certain you know how you're using it mm, 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 mm. no those are great sorry i was just on your site signing up because i was like i, I want this thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm like and, I and really, it's it's a very quick exercise like five steps i think it has something like 500 words it's really just listing out these ideas explaining how to rank them and how to kind of calculate how strong the ideas are and it's it's, it's a very simple exercise but it, it seems to work really well God. um anyway the third point is how believable the idea is I mean, you can have something that people really want. It can be only available from you. But if people don't believe it, they're not going to buy it. Right. So it, that's, that's the third thing about it, that it, it's, you have to kind of evaluate all your ideas based on those things. And only the things that are really desirable, completely unique, or at least seemingly totally unique and absolutely believable, those are the things that, that really make people want to buy from you. And when you know those things, then it, it's, it's fairly easy to make your marketing work because you're, you can always focus on those ideas and you know that they are the things that are most likely to make people want to buy from you. So that, that just helps you get focus. And that's, right. that's really what I, what I try to be about and what I help people do. Right, and you focus in on that. You might not necessarily lose everything else, but the other stuff just becomes more supporting documents. Like, and we yeah. do this, and we do yeah, exactly. No, that's a great little PDF. I'm actually I want to sit down and carve out 20 minutes to just do that today, just because you know I, it's, it's funny because somebody said this um, to me yesterday in a in a group in a group meeting that we were in. She she just heard some of the like some of um, my accomplishments, and I never like I didn't I didn't really. I don't, anyways, it's, I never really bring them up. So she was just like, I guess you were just being humble and modest when you said that you were a student. And I was like, no, no. Like, yeah, that was what I did yesterday. What am I going to do tomorrow? You know, like you have to constantly reaffirm what you're doing and where you're going. And so anyways, no, it looks like a wonderful yep. little PDF. I recommend anyone listening to this definitely get uh, download it. I know I'm going to go and do it. Um, it looks it looks good. So thank you. Thank you for that, sh for sharing that. Thanks. Um, now, Peter, do you have any favorite quotes? Any favorite quotes that you would recommend that kind of motivate you, that keep you dri uh, driven and moving forward? Or 
Um, well, overall, I think my favorite quote is something that a friend of mine just said like a few weeks ago. Okay, it's actually a proverb, I think, <laughs> but and it doesn't have anything to do with business. I just really like it. Uh, it's the most important thing in life is gardening, and even that's not very important. <laughs> So, so to me, that basically just means that it, like, it's a great reminder that it's very easy to get detached from what is right now mm -hmm. and just think of kind of what was before or what will be. And really just for me, it's been just a really big hurdle to learn to be aware of what's like, what's my emotional state now? How am I feeling? Am I feeling good about what I'm doing? And like, instead of being just driven by big goals, it's fun to achieve those big goals, but it's just... I, I will have a lot more fun on the way there than when I reach those goals. But okay, as far as like marketing and business goes, I think the best quote, and sorry, I don't remember who said this, uh, is that you can't be everything to everyone, but you can be something to someone. I, I think that's about the quote. Uh, and it's, it's very similar to what I always say, is that if you target everyone, you won't hit anyone. Right. So basically, you have to pick a target customer. You have to pick a very specific kind of person you're trying to help because otherwise you won't seem like the best choice for anyone. Yeah. If you're trying to, you, you have to make too many compromises to help several different kinds of people. So there's likely someone else who's focusing on just one of, one of those groups. And then that competitor is the best choice for that group. And then there's another competitor who's focusing on another of those groups. And that competitor is the best for that group and so on. So really being, being again, kind of just focused. Um, so yeah, uh, if you yeah. target everyone, you won't hit anyone. Yeah, no, I that's think that kind of sums it up. No, but that's so, that's so well articulated because, and that's, that's something that's valuable for someone who's new and someone that's, you know, their, their business is up and running. They're at that six figure mark and they just can't break through the plateau. I have a friend, they, uh, Oh, wow, I'm just having a brain fart. So I have a friend. Uh, I don't know why I'm brain farting. Anyways, it's going to come. But his his business is around, they call it the POV method. And it's about drilling into your customer base and really, again, just even, all right, you're, you, think you've, you think you've already done this value proposition exercise. You think you've done it. You think you've got it nailed. You've built your customer base. You've got a few hundred customers. Guess what? Go back and do it again because that's essentially what his company does. I mean, I don't want to simplify it because obviously they do it in a very sophisticated way and very, very thorough way that's proven to have some phenomenal results for people. But it, it it, by laser focusing even again, that's where you can really, really, really see growth in your company and just reduce costs, reduce overhead, uh, just reduce the, the drain on your staff, on your employees, on yourself as a business owner and focus in on those. And it's, you know, it's just, it's a reiteration of things that are just solid fundamental business practices. Um, yeah. Because exactly like you said, if you're for everyone, that's the com most common mistake everyone makes when they get into business. They just want to sell to anybody and everybody. Right. Yep. And um, and that's just the wrong way to go about it, because then where do you find everybody and how do you communicate to them? We're all so busy. What are you going to say to me as I'm walking? I mean, uh, Gary Bensavenga, the world's uh, so many people just definitely like don't even don't even compete to say that he's the, by far uh, the best living copywriter that there's that there's that there is. Yeah. Um, just in results. Or at least damn close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, just in sales generated, I mean, he's got these five common objections that every prospect has, and this is the order they are in. So the first objection is no time. Second one is not for me. Third one is why you. Fourth one is disbelief. And the fifth one is time to think. So every prospect, this is they just this is like a checklist of like when, it's almost like we talk about problems. Once you solve a problem, there's the next one. If you're trying to get the sale, every time you overcome one of these, and so I like to use an analogy like the no time. If I'm walking down the street, some dude's trying to hand me a flyer or ask me for change. I'm like, dude, I don't have time. Like, boom, I, I don't have time, right? And that's just like yeah. so like that's what we're talking about. If you're for everyone, you're gonna suffer from that. As opposed to if you've got such a specific targeted person, it's like if a family member came up to you and was like, hey, do you have a minute? And you're like, well, like if I'm a purple person and they're purple, I'd be like, well, what's up, purple person? Like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yep. I don't know if that's a good analogy, the purple person thing, but it's just, <laughs> but it's just the same, it's the same thing. It's like if I'm, if I'm into, 
I don't even know what. If I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I've, I've, I'm, I'm failing here. <laughs> it's coming up with a good analogy, yeah. but exactly. If you're just for everyone, it's hard to easily identify a group of people where they're at. And in your advertising, like just a, f- a flagging headline: attention entrepreneurs. You know, yeah. Attention, attention, like small teams, like attention, whatever. Like that's they call that a flagging headline in copywriting because otherwise, yeah, everyone's going to miss you. So. Anyways. Yeah, and, and really, if like the uh, common objection to this idea is that, well, I have at least two different distinct groups of customers, and right. I'm doing fairly well <laughs> for both of them. Yeah. Well, that's great. Then you have to target customers, treat them as separate target customers. Yeah. You have to find a way then to be aware that you have two different target customers and, and just structure your marketing so that it fits it. And in many, many cases, it means that you just need two separate marketing strategies you have to do everything kind of twice, twice. Yeah. of course some of the stuff might function for both target customers but like if you have more than one target customer then just take the as like have the expectation that you have to do everything twice if you're lucky enough to be able to do something only once and use it for both target customers whatever it is like um, emails you write or a sales page you write or whatever it is, then great. That's a happy coincidence. Just expect that you have to do everything twice. That's that's likely to get you further. Yeah. And that's that's really why especially small and beginning businesses that don't have like an army of marketers employed, then it's just it's rarely a good idea to do it. It's sometimes okay to have more than one target customer. It's you just really have to be aware of how complicated things get and it gets it gets complicated really quickly because say you you're getting into like you essentially have two different businesses if you've got two different i just i went through this i had a guy that wanted to target parents in general and help them with their kids and their language patterns um and then he had a ceo program he wanted to teach it was uh uh, it was like language for leadership, and he, you know, he wanted to target uh, CEOs and directors for that. But then he had this whole info business he wanted to launch that was around helping parents raise healthier kids that have less limiting beliefs and stronger conf- and more confidence, and you know, and just stronger faith in their abilities in the world. And and uh, and I under- I very much understood that, but like you just said, it's two totally different it's two totally different markets, and that that can change all your communications, all your customer service, any sort of yep. failed payment any sort of like news update i mean you could almost again there are two you could have two different letterheads and basically have two different companies on that and so if that's where you're at you may want to consider doing that and treating them as two separate businesses only because when you have new staff that come in um it's just it's it's tough again it's, it's i'm going to go back to martial arts so if you have a martial arts class and you've got a compet- competition team for i don't know we'll say mma or something right and then you've got a women's fitness class your customer service for those two groups is going to be vastly different, right? Yeah. The women are going to need different care and attention than these, like these, uh, like you know, than these, like just aggressive super athlete guys. Like you know, like you just can't. And so, if you have a new tr- staff member that comes in and you're supposed to have some sort of training for them. Like if you just throw them in, they're going to, of course, they're going to try to manage. But again, if you're trying to build like a company that has systems and processes and isn't dependent on you, how do you design a training program around that to help them juggle both people? I mean, it's, it's, it's like you said, we go back to focus. Now you're trying to teach them to handle two types of people. And in the beginning, yep. it's going to be a steep learning curve for them. So it'd almost be better to have two separate businesses, two separate customer support centers, if you can, even if they're part-time and just two different like scripts or two different, ex- exactly like you said. Um, that's a really good point. I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, Peter, any favorite books, anything that we can recommend to people on the call here to, to, to read, to help them grow and prosper? Um, tough one. Uh, if I'm, like if I only can choose one, then I, I usually always say Robert Cialdini's influence. Mm. Not because it would necessarily be the best marketing related book ever, although I think it must be very close to the top. I don't know what would be a better book. But I think it's it's one of the most fundamentally valuable ones. It it gives you kind of the it gives very practical ideas, but it also gives the idea of how people reach conclusions that they like the more, the better you know people, and the better you know how they think, the better marketer you can be. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I'm saying that mainly because it gives such insight into kind of how illogical people can sometimes be. It, it's not some like it doesn't teach you a marketing strategy, 
I don't even know if if it's technically a book on the marketing, but like, it, well, yeah, that's that's the one I would pick. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great book. That's actually in my top list as well. Uh, what is it? It's scarcity, commitment, consistency, authority, social proof, likability, and uh, reciprocity. Those yeah, the yeah. six, the yeah. six, yeah. So no, I yeah, and I I had a reminder. I used to use my iPhone, and every day it would pop it up. It would just pop up a reminder every day and say the six influence factors are, and I would have to like recite them. And if I couldn't, I could open up and then the note it would like say that <laughs> because they're so important. And again, like yep. you say, just to just to just to help validate why you've suggested that because it's about dealing with people, and every business is about is people, and it's either helping yep. people if it's about making the sale, it's helping people overcome their fears. I mean, really, realistically neither of us would be in business if none of our clients got results right obviously yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously you know we do our best for all clients we can't necessarily always like have a have a hit a home run um i'm sure you and i both uh we work our yep. best and if things you know if things haven't worked out we do our best to make you know make it right um before we go on and that's just the way it is but why then why do still people some people still hesitate from purchasing from either of us why do we still have to do sales well it's because they have fears they have self doubts they have limiting beliefs um between that will actually help them you know grow their businesses and yep. so that's where knowing these six traits can really help you help people. You need to figure out what is it? Do they need me to give first? Like, is it that they don't trust me and think that I'm, I have their best interests at heart? Do they not like think I'm credible? Do you know, like all these things, do they not, maybe they need social proof. Maybe they're just afraid of being one person that makes a decision and we need to show them other people have had the results. So I think that's a great suggestion of a book again, because like you said, it's not necessarily a marketing book. It's not necessarily a business book, but it's one of those books that's like how to win friends and grow people and how to win friends and influence people where we live in a in a world of other humans and the better we can help each other and understand each other and interact and communicate the better and more successful we'll be at everything so that's a that's a great suggestion yeah uh, i i think it's one of the first ones you should read if if like as far as marketing books go even though it's really not basically a marketing book it, it's still the one to start with yeah no it's a psychology book but again it just yep. when you the lessons you'll learn from reading it just will help you understand and that's one of the most powerful things you can understand in marketing is understanding the difference between what people say and what they actually think and feel and do so yep. um that's awesome so peter can you maybe tell me a little bit about what you do now like what do you what are you what are you working on now what are you excited about um yeah, what what's what's happening in your world? Um, well, uh, one thing that's that's happening right now is I'm finishing a new version of my website. Um, as a side note, I rarely urge people to completely redo their websites. It's very rarely that I think it's a good choice to actually redo a website instead of change what you currently have. But I actually reached the point where it made more sense to act just start almost from scratch. So that's that's a big project I've been working on for a long time and it should come to a close maybe tomorrow or or at the latest like in a few days. Um, what else? What else? Um, I'm planning some, uh, an, well actually I'm planning a new training course which is uh, will be on marketing strategy specifically and, and it's something that's actually really really rare uh, I can't name almost any courses or books that would be specifically about marketing strategy they're usually always about one specific strategy or mm -hmm. tactics mm -hmm. so the point of, of what I'm now building is is to find a way for people to learn how to come up with the right strategy for them not not just pick from a list of them but actually like find the perfect strategy for for their specific kind of business keeping in mind their personal traits and uh, likes and and strengths and all that so that's a big project that I've, I've basically just started a couple of days ago and and i honestly don't know how long it's going to take it's a big project <laughs> but but that's a big thing that i've i've decided to tackle now it's been at the back of my head for a long time and uh, now that's something that I, I I decided to go for. And is that something that you decided to do because you see a lot of entrepreneurs or or business owners making uh, consistent mistakes in your like as you recruit like work with clients or how did that how did the idea for that course kind of come about? Was that what fueled it or? Um. Well, yes and no. I think like it's something that that I have to help almost every private client, like have a simple, clear 
marketing strategy. Usually when I ask someone, like, what's your marketing strategy? I get a list of tactics. There's, there's very little, like, uh, understanding or thought behind how they should work together. It's, it's like they might say, okay, I use Twitter and Facebook and email marketing and webinars. And like, okay, it, that, that might be perfect, but like, do you know how they work together? And they're like, well, no, I just do all of them. Like, that's not a strategy. That's yeah. pieces of a strategy. So right. I, I think it, and as a side note, social media is very, very rarely the best marketing strategy or marketing tactic to start with. Right. It's cheap, it can be free even, but it's, it's very rarely a very effective before you're doing really well. Right. Like it, it, it's this. It, I don't know why people seem to think so much of well, it. Well, it's because anyway, it's all their friends tangent. are there. That's why they like all my friends are there. Like that's you know yeah. I'm on I'm on those network. I'm on Facebook all day every day. You know that's that's where that comes. But I, I wholeheartedly yeah, yeah, agree with yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, I know I know the thought process behind it. I just don't quite see how people don't see that it's not that simple. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of where it came from. That it it seems like. It's something that's insanely difficult, and and actually, I wrote an email to, not too long ago, maybe a few weeks ago, about how like someone asked me. Well, I get the question all the time, but like someone had just asked, like, well, how do you learn marketing? If if I would now want to learn marketing, like, how would I do it? And like, I, my reply was that okay, first learn value proposition development. That that's manageable. Like, I have a course on it. You can learn it. Then find someone to tell you what your marketing strategy should be. Like, don't even try to learn it. Then go learn the tactics that, that fit into the strategy or are a part of the strategy. The, the strategy is just so complicated. Mm -hmm. Like, to learn actually to build it from scratch. Mm -hmm. That I, 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 My advice was to not even try to learn the fundamentals of it and, like, learn to do it yourself. Rather, find someone who can help you do it. Because yeah. it, it, if you make a mistake in that, then you can spend months and years and, like, just an unlimited amount of money using a like trying to build a strategy that just can't really work the way you're, you're you think it should work yeah 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 so the strategy product or the training or the course is it's most likely going to be like uh, some fundamental steps and then a way of like self selecting into the right combination of different tactics and then teaching those tactics mm -hmm. so it's it's even even though I decided to take on a big project, I decided to stay away from trying to teach marketing strategy as a topic on its own, but rather just let people find the right strategy because my prices are going up. Uh, not the first time, but they are once again going up. Mm -hmm. So it's like I realized that I'm, I can't expect people to spend thousands of dollars on my services if they are just starting out and they don't have any money on the bank. Right. So... But I still want to help them, so I kind of had to find a way to do that, and and that kind of a training or course is kind of the only way that I could really uh, come up with, because it's too big of a thing to put into a webinar, and it's it's definitely too big of a thing to put into like a blog post or something. So, some kind of course on it is is what I'm now working on. Yeah, no, that sounds like a great that sounds like a great um, a great approach to it, and I like I really liked your advice about. Just telling them to just learn, learn how to do your value proposition, and learn how to execute well, and just get someone to help you with the strategy. Because yeah, yeah, because there's it's yeah, yeah. It, you just ev like even if they want to learn and do it themselves, okay, do it yourselves. But I'm t like just a little bit of money to an expert or someone to to vet what you've like laid out. It just will pay dividends. I, again, to go to another client that I uh, that I was working with, he had built uh, a strategy. And he was just, he was convinced that if he could get his value proposition in his ad down and find the right like list, whether it was with Facebook or Google or wherever, um, right. But he was just convinced that that's what, what, what he needed. I just, I got to get clear on my ad and my targeting. And I just showed him how mathematically speaking, based on realistic numbers, there's no way the straight, like there's just... No way, like the lead to buyer cycle and the price points and all that, like there's just no way he was going to do anything but drive himself into the ground. 
And yep. it's, yeah, yeah. The, so it's yeah, it's just so it's it's a bit comic how how you react to it because it's the same reaction I've gotten from a few other marketing professionals who do marketing strategy. It's it's this kind of like. I guess we shouldn't say it out loud, but yeah, it, it, people really should get a bit of help with it. And I, I get the point. Like it, it's, it seems so self-serving to say that you need to hire yeah. me or someone else to help yeah. with that. Yeah. But it, it, and and I, the point isn't that you couldn't learn it. You yeah. can learn it. Yeah. Like oh, it's, it's not somehow magical. It's not some talent or something. You can learn it. It's just so much to learn. Yeah that it's unreasonable for anyone except a marketing professional to go through it. It, it. Like, it just doesn't make sense for you to spend that much time learning something unless it's going to be your profession. Exactly. So, yeah. I, I, it's just kind of funny because a few other people, and some actually you know, have reacted exactly the same way. Right? Kind yeah. of this awkward silence and being like, yeah, that's kind of true. So, it's just, it's so true. And uh, again, to, to help in... in, in and validate that uh, to again to go back to my martial arts background, but I've I've been fortunate enough to train with a lot of world champions and a lot of very 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 successful competitors, and there's something that I learned from one of my mentors where they just called it controller and android, and what that meant was is basically if I'm the athlete and I've already chosen the art that I want to compete in right and I'm already like training in this art and I choose like the, the competition I'm gonna go compete in we can kind of depending what level that you're at if you're new there's not really an easy way to figure out who's gonna be there but if you've like you know if you're up in the belts at all then you kinda of can tell who else is on the circuit so you can figure out who your competition is again much like business figure out who your competition is you can kinda of analyze them a little bit and then you go to your mentors and you get them to sign off on your strategy, and when they approve, you've got a, you've got two, you've got at least at least two, two or three mentors, coaches, and when they sign off on it, like they work together, and then when they sign off on it, you go into Android mode, which means you don't doubt it, you don't second guess it, you don't do anything other than just drill, 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 drill. get those 10,000 hours, those 10,000 reps, whatever you need. That way, when you show up at competition day, you already are the champion because you guys have yep. executed that. But again, if you were to do it on your own, again, take the exact same scenario, you know, you're what, you're two years in on a sport, you're four years in on a sport, you're, you're five, six years in on a sport, right? And you go and you look at people, you look at people who are at the same experience level that you're at, and you try to think of how you're going to beat them, you know, and then you make up your own strategy based on the knowledge that you, like, you know what I mean? Like, you're basing it off of your knowledge. You're not basing it off this bigger picture thinking that you have. And, like, yeah. like if someone yeah. – yeah, so it's it's exactly – it's so – you're right. It does sound self-serving, but I, I'm very much behind it. People need – and if not you or I, they need to get someone to sign off on their strategy because yeah. you can just – yeah, it's, 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 it's so – it's one of the things that I think really pains me. <laughs> it's just to see people fail. No, but it's just to see people yeah, fail. Yeah, no, it, it, I, I get exactly what you mean. And I, I, kind of on the same lines, like I, I built a training course on, on how to craft your own value proposition. And the point is that, okay, among the course, you can get my personal support. I, I just want to include it just in case someone gets stuck with a question. Uh, but the point is you can do it on your own. You can just get a set of questions, answer them, mix them up in the way that it, the course shows, and you have a very good, uh, strong value proposition at the end. Hmm. But there's, I, I just don't think there's any way of doing that with marketing strategy. I, I, there's just no, I, I don't know how much it would take, if, take your yeah. time or, or anyone's time to go through the thing yeah. to be able to kind of do it alone from scratch. So it's, it's, uh, it's a different kind of problem to build the strategy, like learning how to use a tactic or, or all those things, those can be learned on your own. Yeah. But the strategy is, it's just like when I've been thinking of how am I going to build this, and I was actually talking with my wife about it today, like how am I going to make it possible to like in, in some sense like give people a strategy when they're working with me personally? And basically the answer was that, okay, I have a set of different tactics and different strategies and how everything fits together in my head. And there's just like, I don't know how many there are. It's just like reading books, seeing what other people do, working with clients, seeing what works for them, what works for me, what works for other professionals. And like, that's kind of where I'm drawing from. So when someone explains to me that, okay, they sell 
like now I had a client uh, recently who sells like managed IT services to small local businesses. Then I like I haven't ever heard I I haven't even really heard of someone who would do that. But when I knew his business, then I was like, okay, well, in that case, you can use these tactics to get in front of them and these tactics to convert them. And like, there's a strategy. Right. Like, how could I teach or how could anyone really teach that? It, it, I don't know. Yeah. If, if you have an answer to that, that would be great. But no, it seems but like it's... it's just this like library of ideas that you can draw from. But what I'm trying to do is make a kind of put the library on paper or into a course and then find a way to for people to find the right one from among them or build the right one from among the pieces in there. Yeah, I mean I mean the best analogy is almost I think would be calligraphy when you like I lived in Japan for 3 years and calligraphy there it's about it's about encompassing all the entire embodiment of all their yeah. experience all the other calligraphy they've written into the stillness and focus of that moment to produce yep. that single character with precision. And so even though I'm only creating one character on that paper, I'm supposed to just relax, tap into this wealth of experience and knowledge and focus and then, you know, and just, and, and execute it with, with just, with, with grace and beauty. And that's exactly like for them, they're like, Oh, you, you know what I mean? Like, like I, I know exactly what you mean. They're like, you don't understand. Like what is the joke? It's that, it's that whole thing. It's like the guy, his water heater goes out. So he calls the mechanic and the, uh, he calls the water heater repairman. The water heater repairman shows up and he takes him down to see the water heater. And the guy asks him a few questions and looks at the water heater and goes, Oh, and pulls out a hammer and like taps on the thing three times and boom, the thing kicks up and the guy's like, man, that's so awesome. I've got, you know, I've got a wedding to go to and, you know, shake his hand, just send me the bill. And I'll make sure you get paid. All right, boom, they go. And then later he gets a, it gets a bill in the mail for like a hundred bucks. And he's like, out, outraged. He yeah. calls the guy up and he's like, Hey, like, what's up with your bill here? Like what's going on? And then, um, the guy sends him back. He's like, sorry, sorry, let me itemize that bill for you. Um, you know, I'll send it back. It'll all make sense. He's like, all right. A couple of days later, he gets the bill and it's like hitting your water heater with a hammer, $1, knowing where to hit $99, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's, that's exactly it. Cause if the guy had known, he would have done it himself. So no, yeah. I just, I love that. That's just, it's, yeah, no. yeah. And the other, sorry to be talking about the product and the strategy overall. So no, much. no, 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 it's, it's, it's so on it. top of my mind now, cause I've been trying to kind of organize the thoughts and put them into some, Bam. some way that it can be communicated as a whole, instead of just individual strategies and pieces of strategy. It's, it's fine. I mean, no, no, I mean, shameless promotion. I mean, I'm, I, <laughs> yeah. if a business is purpose, like, for my my point of view of the world, like first of all, I wouldn't have invited you on here if I didn't for this interview. If I didn't think you had quality stuff, and I hadn't invested the time to to get to know you, and we've known each other, you know, for a while now, and I've looked at your stuff, and I'm even going to be doing the exercise of the freebie you gave away by all means. <laughs> so, but the other part is remember. That's the whole like business solves a problem. If I have a toothache and I'm crying and I'm in pain, I walk into a dentist's office, I leave on the other side smiley, happy, and I'm you know my life is better again. And so why wouldn't we want to put more people that are suffering from that pain through that? Yep. I call it the black box because I'm a marketing guy. I'm not an operations guy. I'm not a good manager. So for me, that's like a black box where just like the problem gets solved. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but, yeah. But that's just it. So by all means, I mean, where can we? Where can someone go if they're interested in your course? Just go to your site, petersandine.com. Um, yeah, that's a good place to start. The course isn't ready. Uh, as I said, I just that's started fine. building it. Uh, but fine. I think the the, tra the PDF that you keep referring to, the exercises, is a good place to start because it's really just a simple way to evaluate how good your ideas are, like seeing which are the strongest ideas, which ideas are most likely to make people want to buy what you're mm -hmm. selling. And that's, mm -hmm. well, you can find it from the homepage. But, yeah, um, it's free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, no, that's great. And the other point of that is when we're talking about marketing strategy, just before we finish the call here, is that even my, myself, like we just talked about that, like we would get someone like, I'm even thinking that I might want to have you look over my strategy because I'm way too close to my own project. Yeah, I'm yeah. way too close to it. And so, again, it's just, it's one of those things that's so critical, it's so important that I just, I just loved your suggestion. And that's why we both kind of had that awkward silence and laugh because we're like, we are kind of self-promoting ourselves. But even if they don't come to us, just please just have the wisdom to just not like, just not exist in like, you know, cackle like a mad scientist alone in your office, <laughs> thinking like you're going to dominate the world. Like it's a team effort. It's always a team yeah, effort. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but like about half or even more than half of my customers and, and private clients are marketing professionals. 
Yes. Yep. yep. So, like, yep. It, it, it is like when, when you do like value proposition development, marketing strategy and conversion optimization are kind of the three things that, well, among a few others that are really like, they're so specific that even marketing professionals can be doing something entirely different and still you would categorize all of us as just marketing coaches or marketing professionals or marketing trainers or whatever. But they're just like, I go to someone else to get help with video marketing. That's not my expertise. So I'm, I'm happy to get someone else to help me with that. Right, 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 right. No, exactly. Uh, specialized knowledge from Think and Grow Rich. Deal with yeah. people who play at the things you have to work at. I learned that from uh, my time as senior marketing director for John Asaraf. That's a great quote of his, and I, I that was the first time I felt I experienced it when we brought some other people on the team, and they played at things that I had to work at, and it was just like, yeah. that is just so awesome. I'm like, you are like, – I'm just – I'm like, I love you. Don't leave. Don't go anywhere. You just stay right there. Keep doing what you're doing because that's exactly yeah. it. So. Um, and most time people are penny wise, pound foolish because they don't want to spend the money, but they, there's so much more on the other end and team together, everyone accomplishes more. So, yeah, yeah. I had a, had a similar experience with a client who, who is a, a Google AdWords expert. And for a moment, I, I thought that I knew AdWords somewhat well. I don't use them a lot, but like I thought I knew the system fairly well. Then I saw him play with an Excel sheet and upload some ads and, I think I watched the thing for like, I don't know, five minutes or 10 minutes. The guy had made a, a full-fledged campaign from nothing to, to a, a, a company that was his client with, I don't know how many thousands of keywords. Right. So, see, he had created thousands of ads yep. in a few minutes. Yep. 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 He had a way of tracking each one of them. Yep. He had a, like a way of actually making sense of all of that. And I was just, okay, I won't do my own Google AdWords anymore. <laughs> like, it's a scary thing too because you just don't know what you don't know. So it's like, yeah. it's like exactly like you said, like you would have never in your life have guessed that that was possible. Like yeah, just, no, right? no. Like you just wouldn't have like imagined it. Like you wouldn't have like – yeah, you wouldn't have like farted and some idea comes to your head. Hey, like just there's no trigger to just suddenly like have an epiphany like that. You just don't no, know what no. you don't know. And when you know better, you do better. And so just surround yeah. – that's why they say it pays like you – know, I think that was a Henry, Henry Ford thing was he was just – you know he just hires all he, – he makes sure that he's not the smartest person in the room. You just surround yourself yeah. with a bunch of smart people. You know you'll be all right. So – um, yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. So, yeah, Peter, this has been an awesome call. Thank you so much. Um, if anyone wants to check out any of Peter's things, you can go to petersandine.com. That's S A N D E E N, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> petersandine.com, um, or just look for a link on the site. And, uh, Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, so much of value and appreciate your time. And it is an honor to consider you a friend and associate. And, yeah, just thank you. Thanks for having me. It's great to talk with you as always. Yeah, awesome. All right. You've reached the end of our interview. Now first, let me thank you for listening. I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know. And now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, what can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give them to just do it for you? Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success, so please reach out and interact. You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. Uh, you're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast, and if you're enjoying them, please Leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you. Take care of yourself. And remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I believe in you.